Can you believe it? 2020, it's finally over. Doing a little bit of cleaning. My mom always used to say that you wanna clean up really well New Year's Eve so you can start the new year clean and fresh and all that, that's what you're supposed to do. I didn't do that, I screwed up. And I've also been vlogging every single day for 2020. Kinda cheating on some days where I only filmed for a couple seconds just to do it, but on my vlog channel, there was a little entry every single freaking day. I definitely learned a whole lot from doing that. Some good stuff, some bad stuff, but let's talk about it. Now, the main reason why I decided to challenge myself to do this is so that I can stop paralyzing myself. This background's a little weird, isn't it? Sorry. There you go, much better. Hands down, the best thing that came out of vlogging every single day was that it kept me in this habit of just hitting that record button, even though it's not perfect. You have a toilet in the background. I have no lights, okay? I literally plop the camera down and I just hit the record button. If I wanted this to be perfect, I would have set up lights, worn a microphone, had another microphone. And sure, that would be technically nicer, but for me personally, I feel like the more I think or overthink stuff, I really just start to paralyze myself. And instead of just saying, oh, hey, I don't care, hit record yeah filming right now we're getting it done you know if I overthink it then it just becomes this thing I have to do in my head and it, it really starts to feel more like work by the time I get all the lights and set up and everything that it, I just don't feel as just normal if that makes sense I feel a little bit more robotic and just getting in the habit of just hitting record every single day even if the, the material wasn't that special it just kind of kept me in this mindset of Hey, don't try too hard. You wanna try hard, make it as good as you can, but at the same time, you have to realize there's a balance, you know? By the way, there is a reason why I'm sitting in front of this toilet. I'm gonna in install this right here. It's a gift from my buddy, Derar, who's the ones that organizes the trips, and we were supposed to go to Bali this year, but of course, that got canceled, so hopefully we can do it this year. I'm so excited to travel again. But Derar says, hope you start 2020 with a clean butt. I have this one at home, and it's a game changer. It takes about two minutes to install, enjoy. Derar man, you are the best. So I guess this thing splits the water line and then sends water up to this and you just tss, tss, your butthole. So tight. And I know that I'm definitely not the only person that gets in their own way. I think that's a pretty common thing. A lot of people go, oh, I want to start a vlog or I want to do this or that. And they start it for a little bit and they look at their own work and they go, this is, this is stupid. What I'm doing is stupid. And you just kind of overthink it so much to the point where it just never happens. You know what I mean? And feeling like what you're doing is stupid i get that feeling all the freaking time i mean look at me i'm installing a, a boudet while talking about vlogging <laughs> does it work oh my god it works he also got me a lumilux toilet light what oh it's like an rgb light up here <laughs> okay so it's motion control there's five different brightness levels and it's rgb so you could change the color look at this my toilet's a little party, what the heck? And it's got a little motion sensor on here, so it only really turns on if I'm in the bathroom. This is kind of cool. Appreciate it, Durar. You have the most thoughtful gifts. <laughs> Carrie, you have to decide on the color, ready? Huh? Huh? Look at that. Now it looks like there's treasure. Like, you know, when you open up a treasure chest, it's like, <laughs> And then we got a hose, too. How do you do that? You, like, ha just make sure that your aim is right? Like. Yeah. Not that hard. Is there like a low setting? <laughs> it's like just it. full blast. <laughs> the handle just clips in like that. Oh, piece of cake. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Carrie, you want to give it a try? I'm good. No, later? Later. Just not on camera? Okay, now let's talk about gear. And if it records video, I've probably tried vlogging on it. Anything from my phone to cinema cameras. I even shot an entire vlog shot on a drone. But right now my go-to setup is this right here, the Sony a7S III with this 16 to 35 F4. The reason why I went for the F4 instead of the F2.8 is because this F4 has optical image stabilization that paired with the active stabilization on the camera makes it so that even if I'm running around, it doesn't look too crazy shaky. I shoot everything in 10-bit S-Log3 in all eye codec, but I do shoot in HD. I don't shoot in 4K because the file sizes will get insane. And the thing is, YouTube compresses all the footage anyway. So I got this tip from Maddie Hapoya where you shoot in HD, but
but you still upload in 4K. That way YouTube will compress it less. Like right now I'm shooting in HD, but if you switch it between 4K and HD, you're still looking at HD footage, but there's just less compression. So it looks better in 4K. The 4K would be useful if you do a lot of cropping in and out in post, but I don't really do that too much. So it's not a problem there. And the reason why I shoot in the all I codec instead of the compressed codec is because the computer just edits it better. The compressed codec is more work on the computer. So even though they're smaller in file size, it's just harder to edit. So I like to just turn things around really fast. I don't want to make proxies. I don't want to transcode. I want to be able to just download, edit, render. Now this setup can dry you up because it's over $5,000. And the only reason why I was able to justify getting a camera like this is because I also do video production as a profession. So I look at it more as an investment. You do not need a setup this insane for vlogging. For example, check this little guy out, Osmo Action. I have a PGY cage on there, a little microphone. And I just kind of leave this somewhere in the car or in the van or in the backpack, depending on what I'm doing. It's a great little sidekick. You can still attach a microphone through some adapters. I'm gonna throw links to all this stuff down there in the description, but you can still see yourself. It has pretty good image stabilization. It's a fairly inexpensive action camera. The only downside is action cameras do not do great in low light. It's not gonna look super cinematic, but during the daytime, you can walk around and it's gonna look pretty good and it's a nice wide angle. I also like that it's pretty good at holding a charge. I mean, I haven't used or charged this thing in over a month and it's still holding about a 70 to 80% battery charge on here. So even if you neglect it for a little bit, you can pick it right back up and start using it right away. My first vlog camera was probably the ADD. I wouldn't really recommend that now. I would say get the Canon M50, which is a good budget camera that's pretty compact. Pair that with an 11 to 22 mil lens and that'll do a pretty good job for you and it's gonna give you good Canon colors is right at the camera. You don't have to do all that color grading. If you're trying to get something in the middle, then I think maybe the Canon EOS RP is probably one of the best values. You're getting great Canon colors, you're getting a full frame sensor, you get that great dual pixel autofocus, and then maybe pair that with a 16 to 35 F4. Like the main things you're looking for is really a camera and lens combo that's gonna be wide enough so you can just hold the camera. It's not too far and it's still a nice, wide shot right here. I definitely need a good solid flip screen. I don't know how people used to vlog without that. You definitely need a good spot to mount your microphone. You definitely want some good autofocus. That's important. I've tried out a dozen different microphones and I still keep resorting back to the video mic Pro Plus. I'd show it to you, but it's mounted on top of this camera. It's a couple hundred bucks and I've tried switching to multiple other microphones before and I was excited to try the one that communicates with the Sony hot shoe here so that you don't need a cable running out the side and plugging it into here. I ended up not liking it because you can hear a lot of the handling noise. This Video Mic Pro Plus, even though I'm touching the cameras, it tends to stay pretty suspended and it does take up quite a bit of space. It is pretty large, but it's worth it. I have a dead cat on there to block out a lot of the wind noise. One of the great features of it is that you can set it so that it records the left channel louder than it does the right. So in case you clip or you talk too loud and it peaks, then you have a secondary backup channel that you can use to recover. It's honestly the microphone that's given me the least amount of problems. And I've tried a bunch of other microphones. I like this microphone a lot. If you're looking for something smaller or on a budget, I think there's the Movo EVTMX plus 10, I don't know. I'm gonna put it right here. I think it's about 40 bucks or something like that. It sounds pretty good and it doesn't require battery, so you don't have to worry about turning it on every time you start up your camera. Because if you have a microphone that doesn't auto detect when your camera turns on, you could be in trouble. I've done it a bunch of times where I turn on the camera, forget to turn on the microphone, and it's like, oh crap, I didn't record any audio. It's just, which makes it pointless. Let's go down to the switch pod, which you've probably seen already. Love this thing. It's the way to go for something really ultra compact. A lot of people like to use the Gorilla Pod with the bendy leg. I, I don't like messing with that thing. I like just being able to swing this thing open, set it down. And sure, I can't, you know, wrap it around a tree and all that, but I realized I don't end up doing it that much anyways. Now the switch pod doesn't really come with a head. So you decide what kind of head you want to put on here. And that is a quarter inch. So that's the smaller thread that you typically see on tripods. Now I ended up going for this Manfrotto head. I really like how rugged and sturdy it is. And also I switched from the Joby one that I used 
to have because this one has a pretty secure locking mechanism. Like you can quickly release it by doing that, but it's two stages. So you have to first release the safety and then you can unlatch it. So it hasn't accidentally come out on me before. Now the previous one I had was just one thumb screw. And while I was hiking and I had this whole rig attached to my backpack, it came undone and my Canon EOS R fell, hit the ground and the touchscreen got all messed up after that. I basically just have a lot more confidence with this. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the bottom is a 3 8 inch. So that's the bigger side screw than the quarter inch. So you also have to have a little adapter like this. So this would just convert that quarter inch to a 3 8 and then now you can go ahead and attach this on there. Now the plate I leave on here is Peak Design's dual plate. And why I like that dual plate is because one, it can attach to this Manfrotto style plate right here. You turn it the other way and now it's an Arca Swiss. So now it fits onto my Peak Design tripod without having to swap out the plate. And this thing's pretty cool too. You attach it to, you know, whatever backpack strap and you can just drop your camera in. And finally, this Peak Design tripod Pod right here. A lot of you guys are gonna give me crap because this is such an expensive tripod, but I'm not kidding. This is one of my favorite things in my kit. I just love how small it gets. And also this is the carbon fiber version. So it's very lightweight. It's lighter than the aluminum version that this camera is actually standing on. But the aluminum version is gonna be quite a bit cheaper and it's also gonna be a little bit more sturdy too. This carbon fiber tends to have a little bit of flex in it. But again, it's my favorite. I put this Aerie Alexa on here before just to see if it would hold and it did it's crazy and again this plate never leaves the camera because from here I can slide it into here I can hook it into this tripod which is an Arca Swiss or I can hook it into this right here and remember keep in mind that this is all stuff I accumulated over years of vlogging you definitely don't need nearly this much stuff to vlog I've shot vlogs entirely on my phone and they actually look really good I think if there's one downside of vlogging on your phone is the audio quality so just you have a couple different solutions to record better quality the audio and then you're good. I think I should do a full on video on how to set up your phone to be like a really good vlogging setup. I don't know. Let me know if that's something that sounds interesting and whoo, I'm tired of talking already. My gosh, guys, I'm tired. I'm out of breath. I can't talk. My voice is gone. Brief intermission brought to you by PETA. Hi buddy. Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? Now I also do try to time out my vlogging to the morning and also around golden hour, partially because of better lighting in those hours, but also because my energy levels tends to fluctuate throughout the day. And for me personally, I have a lot of energy in the morning right after I wake up. And then around noon, I tend to dip down and I mellow out a little bit. That's when I like to do some editing or anything like that. And then around golden hour or the evening, I start to get my second wind of energy. Now looking back on my old videos, I definitely try to be more or like, wow, I don't know why I used to do that. I look back on those and I definitely cringe now. So I don't do that anymore, but I definitely try to capitalize on when I have a lot of energy because if you're in a good mood and you have a lot of energy, everything just flows. Everything just feels smoother and it's fun. If you're tired or you're in a bad mood, vlogging just is not fun. It is such a terrible experience. And sometimes like for me, at least I couldn't say a sentence clearly. I would have to do five takes of everything. So mood definitely has a big role in it. And I also like to to edit as I go. So instead of just shooting out the whole vlog and then sitting down and editing the whole thing, I'd like to shoot a little bit, edit a little bit, shoot a little bit, edit a little bit. And that way you get to see what you're shooting. And also I feel like a lot of times when you're filming stuff, it's like, and eh, none of this stuff is interesting. It's very hard to know what you filmed is usable and how much of it you want to delete. But I really see what the video is going to really become in the edit. So if I shoot half of it and I have a little visual idea and more inspiration by seeing how the first half came out, it's more likely for me to be able to complete the vlog in a more cohesive, nice and clean, I don't know, big words, but you, you get it, what I was trying to say, right? And finally, I'm also comfortable in front of the camera. This took forever, and Carrie is too, huh? Finally comfortable being in the videos. Yeah, but not in your underwear while I'm gardening. <laughs> oh, why are you wearing my underwear when you're gardening? Now, I don't know why, but talking to a camera is such a weird feeling, and I think it's because it just doesn't respond to you. You know, you can talk to a camera, no problem, if you're FaceTiming somebody, but as soon as there's nobody reacting or, you know, responding to what you're saying, it's the weirdest feeling. And I remember the first couple years of trying to look into a lens and say stuff, it was just like, what am I doing? It was so uncomfortable. So for anyone that's tried to vlog and, you know, you've had this 
really, really awkward feeling because you're talking to something that's not responding to you, then don't worry, everyone feels that way at first at least, and some people get over it faster than others. It took me a pretty long time, but after just vlogging over and over and over again, now I feel like this is a normal thing. People still look at me like I'm insane, but still, like I don't feel too weird anymore. But vlogging every day wasn't all good 100% of the time. I think the worst part of it was that it pretty much drove me to insanity near the end of it. <laughs> you know, I never really thought that vlogging every day would do that to me. I just thought, oh, you know, I'll just continue living my life and bring a camera along. But near the end of it, man, it, it, it got kind of nuts. It started to feel like everything I was doing was for the vlog and I, I felt like I could never take a, a break away from it. Even if I forced myself to put my camera down, then I was still thinking about, oh, what would be an interesting thing to do for the vlog and this and that. And I never really did things just for fun. For example, look how dirty it is. It's been neglected. I rarely write it unless it's for a video. Before YouTube, writing was something that I would do every single week without missing a week. It was one of my favorite things to do. But now I feel like I don't do activities unless I, I feel like it can fit into the vlog. Now it wasn't really a problem for the first eight or nine months, but near the end of it, it definitely started to feel like I would vlog because I have to, not because I wanted to. That or maybe it was just too much of a good thing, you know, like mac and cheese, right? We love mac and cheese, but if you had it every single day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you'd eventually hate it. Like today's January 1st, 2021, and it's the first day in over a year where I don't really even have to vlog. But now that I don't have to do it, I all of a sudden got this burst of energy of excitement. I'm like, oh, well, I don't have to do it, but I want to do it. Does that make sense? Like, it's just one of those weird things where if you don't have to do it, then it's fun, but if you have to do it, then it's not fun. So I think the lesson I learned is that I should go ahead and vlog if I feel like it, but I'm never gonna put another set of pressure on the vlog, if that makes sense. I don't wanna ever be like, oh, you must do this on this day. I'm gonna go for a ride and you know, usually I'm like, oh, well, I have to bring a camera with me and film. I'm just gonna do it and leave the camera here. I'll, I'll see you guys when I get back. Now, one of the things that I'm happy about is now I have this personal record of every day in 2020. So if we ever have grandkids, we could be like, hey, this is what grandma and grandpa was doing in the year 2020. And by that day, they'll be like, oh yeah, you lived through that, huh? It's also interesting how much we forget over time. Even if it's a vlog from just a few months ago, if we go back and rewatch it, we go, oh yeah, we did that. It's crazy how much you actually experience over the course of a year and how much of that just gets forgotten. So I think it's really cool that we have this record. I was okay. thinking about vlogging every day again for 2021. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. How does Casey Neistat do it? He did it like ev a full on video every single day. Like, well, that he didn't have another channel. Like, he had one <laughs> but channel. But still, that's pretty insane. To put out an entire yeah. video every single day, that is insane. And I think- Although I am grateful that you did do it for 2020 because you basically captured me and my new relationship. So that's pretty cool that I could just show people. Oh, this that is, is true. Like you could see the first days and she's moving here in like, what, a month? Yeah. So how come you don't think we should vlog every day for 2021, huh? I feel like this turned into like a, a baby basically because you know when you're when you have a newborn, you have to have like all your time. You don't sleep. You don't eat. You like you have to worry about the baby. Now we can just skip a few days and it's not a big deal. Like yeah, it's not a baby anymore. Now it's like a teenager. You know, like now it's like exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think the hardest part about keeping a vlog though is the consistency. It's kind of like a diet. You know, yeah. you're very excited. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna lose a bunch of two weeks in. You're eating French fries <laughs> and burgers and pizzas. Another thing is you have to plan to an extent, but you can't over plan because so much will change. And if you're doing a vlog, you have to be very flexible. Yeah. And things never play out as expected. Instead of going like, no, our plan didn't go to plan. You just have to yeah. kind of like get in this mindset of like, all right, we're taking a new direction. Where are we exactly. going? All right. Also, it doesn't help that we chose it on like one of the craziest years of everybody's life. It, well, yeah, it was very difficult to vlog every single day because it's like, okay, well, we're quarantined. We can't really do exactly. anything. Uh, how do we make a interesting 10 minute video? Then we make like a without... whole outfit out of boxes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I'm glad we did it. I will never do it again though. What is the biggest thing you learned from the last year? Just being part of the vlog every single day. Just pick up the camera and shoot. Honestly, 
Like, just do it. There's a time and place to yeah. make things look really professional and perfect, but if you're trying to pair a vlog with that perfection, then it really becomes too much, I think. Yeah. Especially if you're doing it by yourself, because if you want something to look professional, you need a, a team, team, a crew. Yeah. But anyways, thanks for everyone sticking with me through all of 2020. It was an insane year, and 2021 already off to an insane start. So don't unbuckle your seat belts just yet. This year is gonna be a good year though. I'm gonna definitely lose some weight. I'm gonna prioritize my health, okay? I let the vlog kind of take over for a little bit, but I'm gonna prioritize health. So, you know, that's, I, I know you probably don't believe me because I said I'm gonna lose weight at least 80 times before and never actually fall through with it. This time it's gonna be different, hopefully. Yeah, that's all I got for this video. Carrie, would you like to add anything? But I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. What were you saying over there? Tina says hello though. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Gene, thanks so much for the awesome DJI Pocket 2. It's been super fun to work with, especially as a BTS cam on our latest short films. Also, big thanks to uh, Giveaway Boy Sam. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it.